At the dawning of 1942, 11,000 troops were deployed on a special mission to construct a supply route between Alaska and Canada, and among the 11,000 were 4,000 black segregated soldiers, segregated to their own infantry because the thought of the time was that the black soldiers were just not as capable as the white soldiers. For this particular mission, the black soldiers were tasked with carving out the initial route from the north by clearing a path through Virgin Wilderness, at least 12,000 kilometers long, meeting up with the path that the white soldiers would be clearing from the south. That was the foundation for what we now know as the Alaska Highway. How many of us have traveled that highway in our times? But imagine the task clearing not just brush, but aged forest trees for 12,000 kilometers in temperature that ranged from 32 degrees Celsius to minus 55 degrees Celsius and everything else that go along with being exposed to such harsh conditions. But for these 4,000, the weather elements were the least of what they had to be concerned about because even with such sacrifice to their physical well-being, they also had to contend with discrimination, segregation, and oppression. These 4,000 who were carving out a supply route from Alaska to Canada for over eight months had to contend with the supply that were delivered to them along the route or what they brought, since they were strictly forbidden to enter the settlements they would encounter along the way. There was no restriction to the white soldiers entering the towns that they would encounter in the South, but it was strongly forbidden for the black soldiers to enter the villages of the mostly indigenous people they would come into contact with. In our scripture of Mark 1, 29 to 39, we experience a busy Jesus. If we were to use black urban slang, we would say Jesus was hustling. Early morning prayers with the guys and then he got wind of Simon Peter's mother-in-law being sick and so he went to attend to her. And then by afternoon and into the night, People were bringing many sick and hurting people for him to heal and to minister to. That is what we call a full day. By the next morning, Jesus was prepared to start all over again. And so he commenced his day with morning prayers. But this time, he decided to go alone to pray. He needed to be renewed, refreshed, refueled to continue his work? How many times do we need to find a way or renewal of our bodies and souls so that we may continue our work, whatever our work is? No matter who we are and what we do, we all get to a point where we crave that element of renewal. For some of us, like Jesus, that may look like some time alone, to reconnect with, with our spirits, with ourselves, in quietness. For some of us, that is where we most encounter the Holy One. For others, though, refuel comes from being around other people, being surrounded with, with people and feeling the love. For some of us, we are renewed by the interactions from the village and in the village. Imagine how many of those black soldiers would have done anything to be able to enter the villages they were clearing a highway past, probably looking for a sense of renewal. And imagine how beneficial it would have been for them if they would have experienced the hospitality and generosity of the indigenous peoples of that area. The opportunity to feel warm acceptance from another peoples to soothe the pain and oppression 
from another? How would their lives have changed if they were allowed to go into the village? And those lives they would have changed if they were able to go into the village. In our scripture, after a busy day and after an edifying morning, Jesus decided to change gears. He said, I've done all I can do in these other places. Let's go somewhere else. How about we go into those nearby villages so I can preach there as well? Because that is why I have come. I wonder if Jesus was in the villages that the black soldiers were forbidden to enter. What blessing or perhaps healing were they blocked from receiving from that mandate which forbade them from entering the villages? I am from Antigua in the Caribbean and the people of my culture would say, don't block my blessings, don't block my blessings. How many blessings have we blocked with our NIMBY approach to people who are different from us, to the homeless, NIMBY, not in my backyard, to members of the LGBTIQ2S community, NIMBY, to the mentally ill and the drug addicts, NIMBY, to folks who don't look like you, NIMBY. How many blessings have we blocked from the folks who could use it the most? And how many blessings have we blocked from ourselves by refusing to be neighborly or hospitable? Jesus says, I have done a lot of work in these places. I'd like to spread the blessings around a little bit. Let's go somewhere else. How about we go into those villages to preach? That is why I have come. And we know what Jesus preached. Jesus preached love, compassion, and selflessness. Jesus urged his followers to love their enemies, to forgive others, and to care for the oppressed and the marginalized. He advocated for respect and fairness for those who had none. These sentiments resonate with the spirit of Black History Month as it calls us to continue spreading the message of justice, equality, and hope, and to live the message of justice, equality, and hope. The message that Jesus took to the villages is the message we are called to stand on as people of goodwill and the people who celebrate Black History Month. The message that Jesus took to the villages is a message of hope. Those segregated soldiers who laid the foundation for the Alaska Highway swung those axes and those picks and with every swing came a grunt of effort and pain. And through each wince of pain was a, a melody was ejected, injected, which no doubt was met with harmony of another. Because that is how we made it through the hard times. Each grunt of pain wherein you could find a song was a song of hope. In the face of adversity, our people have persevered with the unwavering hope of Jesus. We are called to be messengers of that hope, sharing the vision of a better world where love and justice prevail. Each year, Black History Month reminds us that the struggle for justice and equality is an ongoing mission. We are called, like Jesus, to go to nearby villages, to spread the message of hope, and to work towards a world where all the holiest children are treated with dignity, respect, and equality. We are called to ensure that others aren't hindered from the villages where the blessings of Jesus can be had. May the lessons of history inspire us to be agents of change in our communities, sharing the message of love and justice for all. Amen. <laughs>